We've got to. We've got major problems throughout the state with utility delays. Additional cost to the project and project time overruns. Utilities by and large are, are looked at as an inconvenience. Especially uh, from a government point of view, it's just either on or right away, get them out of there. I think nationwide, the perception is that the utility companies are not responsive. They're always going to be a problem. There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to live with it. There has to be a paradigm shift. We can't do business as usual. I say there is something we can do about it. We need the utilities. We need the roads. But you need to be a team and work together to get it done. They all have to come together and work together. The good working relationships are the secret to the whole thing. If good coordination, good cooperation, good communication, what we call the CCC effort. It can work. You can make it work. A study done by Penn State University for the Ashto Highway Subcommittee on Construction found what many have long suspected, that utility-related problems are the leading cause of delays to road construction projects. With record capital improvement programs coinciding with utility mergers and downsizing, with increasing numbers of providers wanting access to already congested rights of way, Making the effort to avoid delays is more essential today than ever before. The bottom line is we're working for the taxpayers. You know, it might be a rate payer. Well, the taxpayers are the rate payers. Project should be done with a consideration of overall lowest cost method to do a project. Not what's cheapest for the DOT, not what's cheapest for the utility, but the overall low cost of a project. We need to work together with each other. We need a lot of communication, a lot of cooperation and coordination, and make sure that our goal is to have a good project uh, at a reasonable cost on a timely matter. One, two, three, ready, go. go. To reduce delivery time, decrease costs, and improve quality in the utility relocation process, frequent coordination and communication amongst all the stakeholders must take place early and often. I'd like to see more of uh, an effort placed on uh, an invitation to utilities on the front end uh, stage of, of development of projects. Uh, typically we get into what's known as the 90% stage and by then the corridors have been defined where right away drainage, et cetera, whatever infrastructure is being taken place has already been defined and, and, and utilities are sort of uh, an afterthought. The right-of-ways are very congested nowadays. It takes a lot of pre-planning. Even if they are moving at no cost, we still have an obligation to give them lots of notice so that they can budget, budget for that work. So is that hanging on the bridge? Well, we, we try to coordinate ten, five years in advance, and it starts at the uh, public hearing stage. We invite utilities to the public hearing. We're also inviting the local agencies there because they are impacted the water, the sewer, a lot of cities and counties now are owning fiber, city electric facilities. They are a major player as far as utilities. We treat railroads a lot of times on construction projects just like utilities. There's relocation work, there's, there's inspection, track protection requirements, and all that has to be coordinated effectively or else you can have a delay from the railroads just like you would a utility, utility delay on a project. It's important to set up meetings with them throughout both planning and design. For, throughout planning, um, where we're just doing general alignment um, configurations and then all through design, we have milestones that we set, 30% design, 65% design, and 95% design. And we have meetings with all the utility companies at each stage of design to make sure that they are updated on what we're doing. And uh, we can coordinate with them and then try and avoid their conflicts if we can. If we're in the planning stage, um, and we can plan a road to miss some of these major utilities, well, you're, you're a couple steps ahead right there. In order to plan and design around existing utilities, agencies must first know where the utilities are located. Well, one of the things that we're, we're doing is kind of new is uh, subsurface utility engineering. Uh, the department's uh, taken an advanced uh, step, if you will, in a pre-construction phase as far as locating 
the existing utilities out in the, the right-of-way in our area of our projects. Uh, previously, we came in early in the design process when the initial survey was being done, and we marked on the surface of the ground the location of all the utilities. We refer to that as quality level B information. It's designating. Now that we've reached uh, a point in the design where we know where the structures are going, we're back here doing what's called quality level A work, which is the actual locating and exposure of those utilities at the conflict points. So we're using our vacuum excavation truck, and we're exposing utilities and surveying their exact horizontal location and vertical depth. Some folks may ask, why do you spend this money up front uh, in your pre-construction process when it really should be the utility companies who's spending that money? Well, at an advanced stage of that process, we're, we're getting level A information, which we actually do uh, determine the, the elevation underground uh, of the utility, and uh, we can actually plot those facilities and uh, compare those to our proposed drainage structures. And if it works out that we can miss those, uh, then that saves uh, the ratepayer, and uh, they're also the same folks that are taxpayers. So it's good for all the parties involved. Where the value comes in is during construction and after construction. The Federal Highway Administration commissioned Purdue University, and that study proved uh, and was documented that they saved $4.62 for every dollar spent on subsurface utility engineering. It's a, a, a national disgrace, the amounts of money we spend to relocate utilities that really don't need to be re relocated. They could be designed around if the designers had this good subsurface utility engineering information and used it. And subsurface utility engineering is just one of the tools that allows us to avoid claims, delays, and litigation, and everybody wins in the end. It's a win-win situation. The state of Wisconsin has passed legislation that mandates the communication and coordination process and the time frames in which it must occur. It really just formalized what we were trying to do anyway. It has requirements for both the DOT and for utility companies and for contractors. Uh, the bulk of it is between the communication between DOT and the utility companies during the design phase. But this law requires us to give them a certain number of days to do their work, their design work. So we can't condense that. It requires the utility companies to develop a work plan. And they also are required to follow that work plan. Where are their facilities? When are they going to relocate them? How are they going to relocate them? Is there going to be work? that's concurrent with the highway contractor. Maybe there's a gas line crossing the road and they're going to wait for the road surface to be removed before they go in and lower that gas line. Uh, we have to put that type of thing in the special provisions. If there is going to be concurrent work, uh, it should be spelled out in the contract documents how all this work is going to be phased between the contractor and the utility company so everybody has a clear understanding when they bid the project what the expectations are. Unrealistic expectations on the part of transportation agencies are a valid concern of the utility industry. Often, DOT personnel simply don't have knowledge of the challenges inherent in utility relocation. They feel that we gave them the plans two weeks ago. Uh, what's the problem? Why aren't they relocating? They don't understand the process that a utility company has to go through to develop a plan and to schedule the funds and to buy the right-of-way to get out of the way, much the same as we do to build a highway project. A big thing is they have to look at it from a system perspective. So we might be asking them to relocate a mile of cable on a highway project, but that's part of a 10-mile piece of cable that they have to look at. Transmission lines, the, uh, these are the high power lines, high voltage, and uh, it takes more time to coordinate those lines to be relocated. Uh, it requires a lot of upfront coordination in our part, the industry, to make sure that we can get those lines uh, released to do the work. Uh, acquiring the material, it's time consuming. Doing the engineering is time consuming. That it, it may take up to 18 months, for instance, to get a, a fabricated steel tower or pole, or for that matter, a telephone uh, cable may take up to uh, a year to get the type of cable that's required lead times to move uh, major uh, telecom cables and things like that have added to, to, to the uh, situation. 
then too, you know, we, we're not really given the opportunity to say, well, okay, this is a major concern for us. Uh, a lot of times we've got uh, uh, umbilical facilities that are serving communities that once we cut that off, then, you know, that service becomes a real big problem for the residents. We also have to work around other utilities also and the structures that the DOT would be installing, as in traffic signal poles, mast arms, um, their signage, stuff like that. One of the problems we have is a utility is ready for relocation, but we don't have all the right of way acquired. And being a power company, you can't just go out there and relocate three poles, skip five, and go back to three again or something like that. Late changes to plans and proposed projects that may not receive funding for construction are also of legitimate concern to utilities. We've taken a major PR effort to make a commitment to them on, on certain projects that we're committed to do it. If we ask you to design early uh, and we make changes, uh, we're, we're willing to accept that responsibility and pay for those redesign costs. The changes that take place before the project's let are not the problems. So the changes that take place once it's let become problems. When you change drainage or you change curb design or you change the, the flow of, a, of an outlet, it could conflict with what we've already done. But then when it goes to construction, then we have to deal with a different department of the DOT, which is their construction department, and plus deal with a contractor that may be wanting to change different um, things out there like how they build the project. And at the Inviting end, utilities to pre-construction meetings and encouraging or requiring them to attend regular meetings during the construction phase can greatly reduce conflicts, costs, and delays. We have uh, scheduled at least weekly meetings with the utility companies and the contractors, uh, making sure everybody's singing off the same same page of the songbook, uh, that, that's proven very, very, very helpful. Well, communication is the key in, co in cooperation. Uh, communication, communicating with the utility owners, them communicating with us, and them cooperating with us. Uh, and also being truthful. If, if you can't move the stuff, tell us the truth, let us know when you can, and then we'll be covered in the contract. But don't tell us you can move it before the contract is let and still be out here six months after the contract is let. That's when problems arise. And so I would add a C to that. The three C's is commitment. Um, you have to commit. Everybody has a part that they have to keep up their commitments for things to move forward. Um, you coordinate, you cooperate, you make a lot of promises. But without commitment, you don't follow through. Some states are finding that making other changes to project development, design, and contract processes can also help to avoid delays and reduce costs. Basically through email, MicroStation, we were able to send CAD files back and forth, our design files back and forth between our utility companies and our consultants so that they could review things a lot quicker, pull it up on their computer and look at it to make sure there were no conflicts in, in order to try and facilitate communication and get the design done a lot faster. One of our biggest successes here at VDOT is we have just come out where we will pay, regardless of who pays for construction, relocation, we will pay for the preliminary engineering cost. We talked to the DOT on projects where we're entitled to reimbursement to have them acquire the right of way for us when they acquire their right of way. One of the things that we have been doing for utility companies is we will stake the right of way uh, in Wisconsin now, or mark the right of way, so that when they go out to relocate their facilities, they are relocated to the proper location. We prefer to pay the utility to go in and do their own selective clearing in advance of our work. It's in the department and the public's interest to pay a utility when they wouldn't be eligible to receive payment. We've been pretty successful here recently on using the joint use uh, program. We're becoming more and more successful on getting them all together and having one trench uh, installed where all utilities can be placed in that, that area. 
trenches technology is something that uh, we at DOT have uh, accepted. Uh, no more pavement cuts. Uh, it is used all over the state, uh, nothing but just tremendous results. There's some boring equipment now that can be performed long distances and not disrupt the pavement and, and have a good installation and also avoid other utilities that may be already installed. We do have some contractors that are doing the construction work and do the utility relocation at the same time, such as your water lines, sewer lines, and uh, maybe some minor utilities. By having it in the contract, in other words, the contractor doesn't have to coordinate with a third party. And so there's a benefit there, but of course we're going to pay our contractor for his overhead and for, his, uh, for the convenience of having him do the work. The Internet and World Wide Web technologies are being used by some states to expand their communication efforts. Face-to-face -face communication, however, remains one of the most effective means of coordinating activities and developing cooperative working relationships. Florida's Department of Transportation's procedures require uh, the designers, the engineers, uh, to actually have a liaison program. Part of that liaison program is the Florida Utilities Coordinating Committee. We're part of the team. We're jumping into a JPA because we want to be part of that team. Our state meeting meets every quarter, and it's a great forum. And we get to air our differences with the DOT, with each other. We have speakers come in. We're kept current with federal laws, state law. You get to meet people from different industries. You get to talk to them. I'm a pretty local company where Florida Power and Light might be all up and down the coast. And I get to um, see how they might have handled something in a different area if it was a construction problem. The more you understand or put yourself in the other person's shoes, the more you could appreciate the problems that they're having and, and it makes it easier to express the issues that uh, you're having with their facilities. Finally, improved coordination, communication, and cooperation are needed among the various divisions within transportation agencies, including upper management, as well as among consultants and the industry. Even some of our managers who set schedules have to have a clear understanding of, of what's involved in a particular project. We have a big turnover within our own department, within the utility industry, and within the contracting industry. A lot of new people, new players involved. So in essence now we have highway consultants working with utility consultants to try and bring these projects online in a timely manner. And it's constantly training these people and reminding them of what the process is and how they should be interacting throughout the project development process from the beginning of design all the way through construction. We need to coordinate. If you're very proactive and you work with the utility companies, they're willing to work with you. It's all a cooperative effort from all of us. To do that, you've got to communicate a lot. And we say good CCC early and often. If you want to make it happen, it'll happen. You can make it work. For more information, contact your local FHWA division office.